Hello and welcome to the Car Care Nut channel. So folks, today we have a 1999 Toyota 4Runner. This 4Runner actually belongs to the 1997 Toyota Camry owner that we looked at their car a few weeks ago. But this is their 99 4Runner. It does have a few concerns that they're concerned with. They want me to check it out. So I'm gonna take you on the tour with me so you can see the common problems with these and the things you really need to know about these in case you're considering buying one or if you own one. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some other videos. If you are a returning subscriber, well, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. Without further ado, let's go check this thing out. So the truth of the matter is when it comes to the third generation 4Runners, before you open the hood, before you look at the engine, before you look at the interior, before you actually do anything, you can lift this car up or lean underneath it. These are high enough and you're going to look at the frame if this is a rust belt car. And that's where we're going to start with the inspection on this car. Let's lift it up, let's look underneath it and I'll show you which spots you need to check. All right, folks, so the first thing is, there's a big cover right here, which is right there on the floor. You're gonna preferably take this off. If you're having your mechanic inspect this car, preferably take this off. First place you're gonna look at is right here, where the frame is. This is, air see how, how crusty this is? This is an area that always gets just slapped with salt and rust and all kinds of stuff. So this is the first place you look. You don't see anything, you're going to skip everything else and you're going to come right here, right where the muffler is. And you can see in this car, it's starting. See this crusty area? Like I'm pressing it with my finger and it's all crusty. This frame, here we go, it's starting to fall. See this weak area? I mean, this frame on this car is not even that rusty. This is actually a very clean frame and this area is already rusty. You see that right there, how weak that metal is? This is on its way to rust. If you see a frame that has holes here, it's over. Usually you'll see these 60,000, 70,000 mile, beautiful, pristine interior, looks like nobody sat in it. And all, everything else in the truck is beautiful. You lift the truck, you look here, it's all rotten, there's a big hole right here. Avoid these trucks. Now that you have looked at the frame, the frame looks good, and you notice this frame, the owner truly took care of it. Because if you look at the body, we actually have some holes in the body from rust, and the body is rusting, but the frame is good. This is a very rare case here, because the owner focused on the frame, didn't worry too much about the body. Because honestly, this is not gonna cause a structural issue, because this is a body and frame truck, but if the frame is rotten, it's gonna break and we're gonna have issues. So now that we've talked about the most important thing, and since we're already underneath the car, let's start from the front to the back, do a full inspection here. We're gonna look at some of the common problems with these. Let's start with the cover off. We're gonna look here. There will be very few forerunners that won't have oil on the front differential because the oil filter sits Right there, very beautiful spot. You see it, it's a blue oil filter. Beautiful spot, every time you take it off, it makes a mess here, very hard to clean, gets all in the crevices. You'll always see oil here, that's typical. Now, the owner here has one of those quick, I don't like these, because you're putting the life of your engine on this little plastic clip. Not a great idea, but this is their car, they do side whatever they want. Then moving on from that, we have a leak right here. This is an inner CV boot on the passenger side. It's leaking, you see it's throwing grease everywhere. These are not super common on these, but they're, as they get older, you'll see them. The fourth generation 4Runner is a lot more notorious for this than this one, but this one is leaking. It's a little older, so this is something we're gonna mention to the customer. Moving on to the brakes, the customer has some painted red calipers. When looking at the brakes, you got plenty of pad life left. You always spin, spin the wheels on these because these calipers are notorious to seize. Then we look at the strut, and this strut is leaking. It has a little bit of leak. I hope you can see it. This one looks like it's an original one. Pretty hard to tell you from, just from looking at it. It looks like an original one. This one is leaking. 
we're going to recommend it. And usually when you replace one strut, we replace the other one. This one has a very slight seepage at the top. So this one usually I wouldn't recommend, but this one does have a leak. It's all the way down to the mount. Hard to see on camera, but it's all the way over the mount. So one thing you want to check on these rusty ones, this brake line right here, notorious this to get rusty and leak. This one is good. Let's look at the other side. This one is good as well. It does have a little bit of flaking on it, but nothing serious here. Looks like the owner did replace the brake, the flexible rubber line, so that's good. Let's look at our sway bar here. These are also common to brake on these. Sway bar looks good on this side. Looks good on this side, so we're, I'm happy with this one. Something else that is notorious on these is the rack and pinion. It leaks over time. Now all this oil, you see a lot of oil in this car. This is all coming from the top. This is all from the valve cover. The valve cover has been replaced. We're going to look at that, but somebody didn't clean it per se. Now moving on the rest of the truck, we're going to look at the transmission. These, the most you'll get with these is a leaking transmission pan. This one is not leaking, so it's good. Very solid transmission with the exception of one problem. These are notorious for the cooler in the radiator for the transmission to mix coolant and transmission fluid. This is not a good thing. If you get, if you have, a, if at this day you have one of these trucks and this radiator is original, do replace it because they are notorious to mix and we have problems. This is an old school truck, so it has a fuel filter. This fuel filter looks like it hasn't been taken off in a very long time. Very rare to cause issues. See how rusty these lines are? Likely these won't be coming off, so that's going to open a new can of worms, if you would. That's the term we use in the automotive world. Transfer case, good old transfer case. Rarely leak, rarely have any issues. Other than these are notorious for this ADD actuator, this vacuum activated right there, to seize when you don't use your four wheel drive. Catalytic converters. Now this one has an aftermarket catalytic converter for some reason. This Forerunner always will, in its life, will go through one or two catalytic converters. That's just the way they are, and they're very common. So this is something, if you see an original catalytic converter, anticipate it to go out. They're not extremely expensive. Uh, this one is aftermarket, actually, but just something to look for. And something that actually this car has. Rear heater lines, look at these slides. These are cool, and look how rusty they are. They're not coated, and they're exposed to the elements. And this one is leaking, of course. So this is something semi-major job because you got to remove a lot of stuff that are going to break. But this is something that needs attention. It's leaking coolant. This is one of the concerns of the customer. Moving on to the back and the suspension. Something that is notorious for these. The rear struts are notorious to, from rust. They just break at the top completely. Now, this strut's been replaced. This is a Bilstein. Strut, uh, sorry, shock right there. This one's been replaced, likely broke. They're notorious to break at the top. And the best part is you'll get the car and the customer is saying, oh, there's a little bit of weird noise in the back. One shock is completely broken and the other one is holding and it'll just drive like that. Spring's been replaced as well. These are aftermarket. Now, something else that is notorious for, with these is the parking brake. It always seizes, it's this little mechanism that seizes. Usually when you pull on this, this mechanism will move. Same thing with this side. They're both seized, this one is seized open, and this one is seized in. This is very typical. You gotta take this apart, try to move it until it cleans up and moves up. Sometimes they break and you gotta replace them, but this is something notorious. Do not use the parking brake if you've never used it in the last 10 years. It's gonna seize like this and then you're gonna jam this and everything will get jammed. Don't do that. You, if this doesn't move, we have a problem. You need to take care of it. Something else that is notorious with these, rear axle seals. And usually, if you look right here, right underneath the axle housing where it connects to the backing plate, you'll see all kinds of oil here. That's usually the rear axle seals leaking. This one is dry and then this side, is also dry. So that's very good. I don't think we have any issues. However, with this car, this is the kind of car that people forget that we have rear brakes on them because they last forever. I mean, you don't do anything to them. But in this car, we have a small issue, and I believe it is from rust. Let's listen to the sound that this makes when I turn the wheel. It 
You got all kinds of clicky, clicky sounds. And this is something that the customer is complaining about. We need to take these brakes apart, look at everything. Probably some rust got stuck in there. Double check that axle seal wire were there. When they leak really bad, you'll see them here. But sometimes if they're just starting, if you take the drum, you'll see them. Otherwise, these trucks are awesome. Rust kills these trucks. I mean, rust really does a number on these trucks, folks. The frame, if it's rotten, that's it. There is, there is no fixing that. Unfortunately, Toyota did not cover these like the Tacoma, some of the Tacomas, some of the Tundras. They did not cover these. And, and this makes this beautiful truck that would otherwise last forever. Just, sorry, a pile of junk because the frame becomes so bad on these, starts breaking and things start falling off and we're done. At that point, you see one of these like that, walk away, do yourself a favor. You own one that looks like that, time to move on. Plenty of people that take care of these. There's a lot of good parts in these. You can sell it for parts. If you sell it, please disclose that the frame is bad. Some people will try to weld stuff to it and fix it. Feel free to do that if you are you know, experienced with welding. But if you're a regular consumer, you want to drive this car, A to B, family in it, don't do that because usually those fail too and we have problems. Having said that, let's lower the car, let's look under the hood a little bit, a few things, and then look inside of it and we'll call it a day. Since we are already in the back here, this window rolls down. Beautiful feature of the Forerunner. But one thing I will warn you about these, for the window, the handle. Notorious to seize and cause issues. So be gentle with these, because they'll break if they're seized up. You push, pull on it and it'll just snap the handle right off because it's seized. So always be gentle with these. And this is something you want to check. The window, notorious for the run channels to get rusty. And there goes the window. You lower it, falls off the track, and now we're stuck. So these are a little harder to check because you got to pull the panel, look inside, and look, check everything, but test them when you're buying one because this can get a little expensive because you got to replace basically everything inside. So this is something you always check on these. Otherwise, these are really not, if you find one that is not rusty, you notice all the problems are rust related. Otherwise, you're going to have a few oil leaks here and there maybe a radiator, and this thing will keep going forever. Let's, let's look under the hood. And the owner of this car is actually an absolute car care nut. Watch what he did. I love this modification that he did. Let's go to the hood. Watch this. If you own a third generation 4Runner, you're going to like this. Isn't that beautiful? So this generation 4Runner usually has a stick. This hood's very heavy. <clears throat> well, we have shocks. And I actually want to talk to him. I don't know if this is an aftermarket kit or he custom modified it. I want to ask him because I'm pretty sure we can work something like this for the newer cars. I know a lot of you have been asking about RAV4, Sierra, so if you can do that in the newer ones because I did my Camry. My Camry came like that from the factory from the previous year. But then RAV4, like 19 and up RAV4 and 2021 and up Sienna, doesn't have this. And you have to basically custom make one like this. Beautiful, hood stays up. You saw how quick it went up. I'm not worried working underneath it. Having said that, let's talk about this. This radiator has been replaced. I recognize the part number. This is a Denso unit. It's, it's not actually aftermarket. This is a Denso unit and this is a Toyota part number on it. So this is like an economy line radiator from Toyota. Toyota will sell you the factory radiator and then the economy line radiator. Having said that, same thing with his Camry. I feel like this is the same mechanic working on this. The radiator hoses are not seated all the way. I don't get what's the point with the other, with the mechanic that did this. Same thing. It's not seated correctly. I don't know what's the deal there. Why can't we push this hose all the way down? Same thing in the bottom one I didn't show you, but but the best part is the owner watched one of my videos about I, me disliking these warm clamps. And he actually ordered new OEM hoses and OEM clamps. They're coming in the way and we'll replace them probably with that line that is leaking. Let's talk about this engine. This is a 5VZ FE. The earlier version of this engine, the 3.0 3VZ was a disaster. It's very similar to it, but it was a disaster. So much the Toyota had a campaign to replace the head gaskets. They were notorious, and that engine had so many vacuum hoses, 
It was just a mess to work on one today. But this is a much better version of that engine. These things are solid, folks. You don't overheat them. That head gasket will last a very long time. You take care of them. They have a timing belt, with, which has a little tool. I actually have one somewhere in my box that pushes on the two pulleys to do the timing belt. Let's talk about some of the common problems here and things you need to look for. First, this has a two-piece plenum. So unlike the V6s that you just pull the plenum and you're good to go, this has two of them to do the spark plugs. You can squeeze the spark plugs out though. So you don't need to remove this to do just spark plugs and wires. We have wires on these. But did you know something about Toyota spark plug wires? This applies to all Toyotas with spark plug wires. You can actually have, there's a date on the wires. Now these are aftermarket wires, but the original ones will have a date, a manufacturing date on them. That's one way to know if these are original or they have been replaced. Now, one thing that is notorious on this engine is valve cover gaskets. They're notorious to leak. This one has been replaced, but they didn't clean the rest of the residual, so that's really it. Valve covers are relatively simple. You do have to remove the plenum, but otherwise it's super simple. Everything is simple. This is a very DIY friendly car. Something else that is super common with these is the alternator. And this one's been replaced. It's aftermarket. That's typical on these. They're kind of exposed to the elements and they go. Something else is the power steering. And folks, the owner of this car have mentioned this. These are whiny power steering pumps. They always whine, they always make noise. That's just the way they are, when it's, especially when it's cold and when they get older. People have replaced pumps, have replaced fluid, have done everything. These whine when they're cold. So don't assume that that is an actual issue with this. Otherwise, here's the other valve cover. This has the transmission fluid with a dipstick, which is cool. This takes the old school fluid, not the WS fluid. So remember that. Something else that happens with time, you gotta watch for, the fan clutch, and this one's been replaced, you can see how shiny it is. The fan clutch here gets old and you'll start getting slight overheating and high, heavy traffic, so if you have the original one at this point, in this age, just replace it. That's, play it safe. Otherwise, these things are solid. I know this sounds like a big list, but majority of this list is caused by rust, folks. But this engine is a very good engine. Timing belt is not really difficult to replace. It's very simple, similar to the V6. Unlike the V8, this is super simple. Everything else is, is simple on these trucks. All the other issues, they will have issues here and there as they get older, but they're not chronic and just every day is broken down unless you buy a rusty one. And folks, before we wrap up the video, I'm going to say a few more things that I skipped throughout the video. We were doing an actual inspection on this truck. Something else that it's somewhat common, especially when you get into the 90s ones, not the 2000s as much. The front, upper and lower ball joints, they will go at some point. It is not a bad idea. If you own one of these trucks, you have original ball joints to consider replacement. At some point, Toyota did have a campaign to replace them. So if, the, if that campaign applied to your car and you see it in the history, don't worry about the ball joints because you have the updated ball joints. But if you don't, replace them. It's a good idea. Otherwise, if you don't have a rusty one from these, these are really good trucks, folks. Just be careful with, the, with, with how this can snowball. These cars can have a snowball effect. Original radiator needs to go because this could destroy your transmission very quickly. When you're buying one, you pull the transmission dipstick. If you see a hint of pink fluid, we're done. You're closing the hood and walking away from this truck. Of course, that is after you check that frame, which you can easily lean underneath the truck and see it. So let's take a quick peek on inside this truck, which is really in good shape. And we'll show you the interior and then we'll wrap up the video. Oh, here's the inside of this truck. You gotta be careful with the lift. Alrighty, these trucks, they just has such a classic looking dash. I really like these trucks. One thing about them is they're very narrow. So when you sit inside, it feels narrow. These were very narrow trucks. Something interesting on this one, there's a bubble on the odometer, which is pretty interesting. It looks like rust right around the 40 to 80 kilometers, sorry, 40, 60 kilometers an hour mark. See it right there, I'll point it in the video. But this truck, has 213,969 miles. Pretty, 
standard for these folks these will always have high miles and they will run forever and this particular one is really in good shape it has some custom leather seats the back looks all clean this is the same type of owner look at the headliner it looks all clean all nice and and neat this owner really takes care of this car and he's here and his exact words were i don't want to hold back i really want to fix things i it's not just safety for me i want it to be perfect and we're going to give him the full report and see what he wants to do with this beautiful beautiful truck well there you have it folks we're gonna give the estimate to this customer see what they want to do personally i would fix that coolant leak take a look at these brakes take care of that cv boot and leave it right there he might want to wash that engine get all that oil off so we can see make sure there's no other leaks very rare but rear main seal is possible this is after all an old truck rubber seals get dry and they could leak so this is the only thing i want to confirm but otherwise other than these few minor issues this truck is in great shape actually the frame is good and that's the most important thing Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new and you're welcome to our shop. This is actually the first car we filmed with the lift, proper inspection. Look forward to a lot more videos like this because our shop is open. We have a lot of cars coming in and I'll try to everything interesting that comes in. We're going to take a look. I'm going to show you so we continue learning together, looking at different cars, cars that you normally don't see on YouTube channels because you all see exotics, you see all kinds of other cars. You don't see everyday good cars that people drive that there's hundreds and thousands, if not millions of. And we're going to do that. We're going to speci specifically focus on Toyota and Lexus and Scion. We'll show you all the common problems. We'll talk about the cars and everything else. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.